Hi, welcome back to UncoverFraud.com. My name is David Malamud, and today I'm going to be talking to you about pivot tables. I am a forensic accountant and fraud investigation expert with over 20 years experience. And one of the things that I get asked quite a bit is, what is it, Dave, that you use to do your data analysis? And there's a lot of tools out there, don't get me wrong, but my number one go-to is Excel and pivot tables. Pivot tables really let you summarize an entire spreadsheet that's flat into almost a 3D model. I'm gonna teach you how to do that. In front of you right now, you're seeing a produce distributors spreadsheet of sales to different stores in the city uh, in terms of product description, oranges, tomatoes, celery, the quantity that's sold, the average cost per kilogram, whether it's imported or domestic, the total price, the time, the day that it was paid, and the uh, price before tax or the exclusive amount, the tax amount, and the all-inclusive amount. But you can't see everything here, and believe me when I say that. So let's first highlight all of the columns. And remember that you cannot have a blank space in between any of the columns when you're putting together a pivot table. You then go to Insert. Insert Pivot Table. Your choice when this comes up, when Create a Pivot Table comes up, is you can either put it on a new worksheet or your existing worksheet. And what I suggest is always do it on a new worksheet. That way you can keep your pivot tables separate from your original data. You hit OK, and this new page comes up. Let's first take a look at the right side of the screen, right over here. We can see that each column now has a line item, as well as there are four boxes, the filters, the columns, the rows, and the values. Let's first add something to rows. And what I wanna add here is my product description. My product description now comes up on my left side as apple, carrot, celery, grape, orange, pear, tomato. If I wanna see how many times that appears, a sale for each of those items to each of the customers, I can simply grab the product description, put it into my values where it says count, and I can see that, the, that most of them have five entries, except for oranges have six. Now, what happens if I wanna see which customers order? I can take that and I can put it into my columns and I can see that some of my customers order oranges three times, Parkway, for example, if we look over here, and some of my customers order no oranges, such as Longo's over here. Maybe what I wanted to do is now I wanna see why some customers do order and some customers don't order. But there's more you can do. When I say there's more you can do, if you want, instead of having the customers lining the top, you can take the customers and you can pull them over here, the product over here, and you've got the same analysis, but now you're looking at it by customer, and across the screen, you're looking at it by item or the description of the item. Let's take the count out, because we were counting before, and let's see the total, including tax, how much each of my clients have been paying. What we can do is we can do a value, number format, number, use two decimal places and a comma, so now it looks like dollars to you, and you're able to see who of the customers is the biggest spender. We can sort it alphabetically. We can sort it based on the sum, the descending. And now you see, oh, and we can also get rid of the blank spot. And now you can see who your big customers are, who your small customers are, and voila, you now know how to do a pivot table. Let's just go through that one more time, should we? We start off with the sample data. We highlight. We insert pivot table. New worksheet. We pull customer. We can put them on the top. 
We can take out our blanks because we don't need them. We can see if we want, including the total amount, how much each customer is spending. And from doing this analysis, we're able to tell straight away that CVS is our smallest customer and No Frills is our largest customer. This is such powerful data and such powerful information for you. Let me show you one more thing. If by any chance I'm looking at, and here's where the fraud comes in or error comes in. If I'm looking at the invoice numbers and I put them in the rows, I can see that my invoice numbers, and let's just do a quick look down. One invoice number, at the bottom has a different sequence than the others because it has an A at the end. My question is, do you need to go and look at that data? If you do, you can click through on the 18,000 right here and you'll see that you have the journal entry where you can go find the supporting information to see is that invoice number incorrect or is it an intentional error? In other words, is it a fraud? Again, my name, is David Malamed, and I am a forensic accountant and fraud investigation expert. To find out more about me and the services we offer, please visit uncoverfraud.com. Also, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and to subscribe below. That's learning how to do a pivot table in less than five minutes. I hope you enjoyed it. I look forward to seeing you again. God bless.